Julio, rural development as a theme has regained importance in the last couple of years thanks to its importance for poverty reduction. Now, with that comes the discussion about the right approach. Do you think that territorial approaches are the right approaches? I'm not sure if territorial development is the right approach. I just think it's, it's, it's an approach that started from a lot of people questioning the type of results or, or low results that we were getting uh, with a lot of the projects and policies we were having in Latin America. And I think it's also the case in other regions of the developing world. And we started trying to understand why is it that we weren't getting you know, the type of results and impacts that we were interested in. Uh, you know, the question, uh, the answer to that question really was that, you know, Latin American rural societies uh, have changed in, in many ways and in many significant ways and very rapidly. And that the ways in which we were working with those societies had um, lagged behind. We were doing work which was more uh, based on societies that no longer existed. Um, the economies, for example, of rural societies are much more diversified. Uh, there's a stronger influence of urban centers. Uh, young people in rural societies have so many more options than their parents did. Fortunately, they also have better education. They have better means of communication. There's more roads. Um, so it's it's really a vastly different world, even even though so many of the old problems still persist, unfortunately. For a changed society, we needed new ideas. That was the origin of, of the whole thing. What do you okay. think, Julio, are theories that relevant in this context anyway? What doesn't it just boil down how much resources you allocate in the first place? We've seen so many examples, Pascal, of you know, quite rich projects uh, going nowhere or having good results that collapse one or two years after the project ends. We all are familiar with, with those success stories, you know, which are so ephemeral. Uh, no, I think we need to, you know, I, I really think we, we need to get much more in touch with you know, the realities of new rural societies in the developing world. Uh, these places are changing so rapidly and these societies are changing in so many ways. So yes, we need new ideas. Definitely we need new ideas in order to be more practical and more effective. Uh, it's not just a matter of more money. You know, there's a lot of money invested. I'm not saying that there's enough, uh, but certainly we're not I, I would argue we're not getting the type of results that we should be getting for the, for the investment that we already make. So there's also, as we know now, there's a lot of middle income countries that have development scenarios within their countries. I'm sure your home, Brazil, is, is a good example for that. The two big ones, China and, and uh, India as well. That, that probably changes the whole, the whole scenario of having money and well, it's, it's, a, it's a totally different game. Huh? Uh, I started working in this uh, field, you know, over 30 years ago, where very few re countries in Latin America had any, any resources of their own. We relied so much on, on uh, overseas uh, assistance. Today, that's not the case. Uh, it's not the case in Latin America, and it's not the case increasingly and that is very good news in Africa. Africa is moving fast. A lot of the countries in Africa are now entering or already in the middle income category, and certainly it's not the case in Asia. And so in 10 years, it's gonna be a completely different landscape. These countries not only have funds, have large national budgets, but they also have better qualified human capital. You know, they have better, better technical people, better, uh, better farmers, more educated youth, uh, more doctors, more engineers, they have more infrastructure, they have greater institutional capacity. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a different story, very different story. I wanted to come to the SDG debate. Um, okay. 
And I thought, you know, this brings you to the whole debate of international governance, UN structures, trying to push into certain directions and moving governments along. So do you see that there should be more recognition of approaches, development approaches in that whole debate about indicators, targets and so forth? I think that there's a couple of ideas in the SDG uh, debate which are very relevant for our conversation. And one of them is the idea that we want a set of goals which are in integrated, you know, which, which, which work with each other and not just little islands each, each on their own, but that actually work together to produce synergistic development outcomes. Uh, of course, that is, that is going to enhance the role and the importance of pace-based approaches to rural development because whether you're talking about education, health, economic development, governance, um, empowerment, and equal opportunity for women, etc., all of these things, all of these individual goals need to come together someplace. And, and, and coming together someplace is not just in the government document. It's, it's coming together in concrete societies. And that happens on the ground, that happens in regions, that happens in territories. Countries, in a sense, are averages of many different local societies. Uh, and uh, so territorial approaches and other place-based approaches, I, I think, uh, you know, offer, if you want, a certain advantage as a way to work with this idea of how do we integrate and bring together the, the different individual SDGs. The last Global Donor Platform AGA also focused on territorial approaches and you participated as our keynote speaker to share lessons from Latin America. What is the single most important takeaway message that you took from the discussion there and from the interaction? And maybe you have a suggestion for platform members as donor organizations on what to do. Well, to me, it was very inspiring. And, and, you know, I left very optimistic from that meeting because I thought that many people, perhaps most people in the audience in the meeting, you know, were really asking good questions and, and good questions about their own work. You know, I saw a spirit of, of, of really putting ideas on the table and, and working together and having significant dialogue to try to find better ways. Uh, I, I am so used to meetings where everybody is in their own trench, you know, trying to defend their own little domains and fields. And here in the Global Donor Platform, I saw, you know, an exchange of ideas and, and, a, and a dialogue and communication that to me, you know, it left me very, very happy. I hope, you know, that some of the things that I said perhaps contributed a little bit to that, to, to that pool of common ideas. I think that's extremely important because really I think that's what this platform can really do. You know, in the end, each, each donor is going to do, you know, they have their agendas, they have their own government systems, they have their own budgets and priorities and mandates. Uh, but, you know, we do need much more coherence. And one way to promote this is by talking to each other, seriously talking to each other, trying to learn from each other. So I see the global don donor platform playing a very, very important role, you know, as a locus of, if you wish, global knowledge management. If you think that's not very practical, believe me, it is one of the most practical things that can happen. For the end, maybe you have a, a little outlook where things are going to go from your perspective? You know, when we're working in development issues, it's, it's very easy to be always, you know, frustrated because there's, so, there's still so much misery and so much injustice and so many, you know, children that have so very few opportunities or so, so many constraints in front of their, of their lives. You know, but if we take a, a little bit of a longer perspective, you know, we, we can also see how much progress has been made. And I think the world today has far better opportunities than it used to have 30 years. If I look at my region, Latin America, we're all democracies now. Fortunately, we were not democracies 
you know, 30 years ago, most of our countries, our economies are stronger, our young people are better educated, um, our societies are more demanding of their politicians. They, they you know, they, they tolerate less corruption and less nonsense. So, you know, I'm optimistic. And, and I think that the members of the global donor platform should also be optimistic, you know. Um, we have good years ahead of us, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal, for this uh, conversation.